it's so funny. Making friends is so funny. It's because that's what you tell your kids to go do when they're like little. Well, they go outside and make new friends. I exchanged phone numbers at the, yeah. You did? Yes, with one of the guys, yes. You're gonna have a friend? I, he wants to be my friend. Different friends serve different purposes. Making new friends in a new city. It's hard for adults to make new friends. In this episode, we're going to talk about what it takes to do so. We're also going to share kind of a, a lifer update from the empty nesters perspective and a lot of other, what's so funny? Just, just making, making friends is so funny. It's because that's what you tell your kids to go do when they're like little, well, like go outside and make new friends. It's a difficult thing. And plus people aren't very good at it anymore since COVID. That's what we're talking about here today on the Shaleen show. Thanks for joining us. So obviously. I have my husband, Brett Johnson here, and this is um, today, you know, we want to share with you some of the things that we've been doing. And I know that's true. Like it is weird to say it's, you know, you need to make new friends, but, and I didn't ever think I would be in that situation. And I don't even know if I am, but I guess I am like it. I find that it's nice to have people you can really connect with and share a look like a, go do something together like a walk i like exercising with friends i like going out to dinner with couples i like meeting new people and i'd always not always but for the last couple of years i've been saying no new friends no new friends because i don't have enough time to spend with the ones that i do have but right now a lot of my friends are in a season that we were once in a couple of years ago like a lot of our friends right now are um their kids are like their senior year or they're younger and when you're in that season, you don't have extra time for your friends. Not a lot. No, and I think also um, we've actually been away from the, our kids graduating from high school for a few years now. And I think that um, when we were back at home, we would go out with people. We would go out and double date. We'd go out with friends, but we also went out with our kids. Yeah. So yeah, we have to we have to replace that too because if 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 we had the option to like double date with a couple or go on a double date with like Sierra and Roman or Taylor and Brock or take all six of us and go out. We did that. So, and we don't have that here. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, Roman and Sierra came and visited us here, but you know, we would go out to dinner with them at least once a week. Yeah. So this weekend we did a Shaleen show meetup here in Miami. And the backstory on that is, and this, that's a great way to meet new people. You guys is to, to schedule your own meetup. Like there's an actual app, you know, Eventbrite where you could, you could post it there. You can advertise it. You can get the word out. You can do it in Facebook groups. There's, if you are in a community of people who listen to the pot, like maybe you're in a city, listen, if you listen to the Shaleen show and you want to meet other people, feel free to go in the pod squad and schedule a meetup in your city. I mean, do that because you're going to find like-minded people, especially if you've been struggling to make friends. We're not going to show up, but we might. Well, if we're in that city, we yeah. <laughs> but you know, you probably have to pick a, a bigger city, but it, it's worth doing because it was so fun. Let me, I'm going to tell you about how to do this. Um, again, whether you want to do it for a podcast and it doesn't have to be mine. Like maybe you're in another Facebook group or some other community where people need to get in the habit of being in person again, we have to, it's a skill and we've forgotten how to do it. And I think one of the reasons why we're reluctant to do these things is because we've become more socially awkward since COVID. Think so? I know so. There's incredible research that shows, especially ages uh, from like middle school to age 24, that group reports uh, twice the social anxiety that our age experiences and and it used to be like the reverse like they their social anxiety key and generalized anxiety and depression keeps going up and up and up and i think it has a lot to do with social media and covid and all those things so anyways we we scheduled a, a, a meetup and i've been putting the word out for weeks about it and saying like if you want to go send a text right if you're in the miami area and we had over 170 people you know say i want if, if you're coming to miami i'm coming so i'm like this thing's gonna be freaking huge yeah but it yeah. wasn't no and the reason why it wasn't was because of the fact that we never settled in on a date a location a time so we just kept on saying if we do this would you like to come and then so people you you make plans two weeks yeah out a I lot know. of times especially on the weekends that's true 
And the fact of the matter is, if I'm being completely honest, and I'm going to talk about this on Friday's episode, all about overcoming social anxiety, shyness, like learning the skills that make it re- way more comfortable to do an environment event like that. And part of the reason why I didn't schedule it is because we had so much going on and I, I just didn't ever sit down to figure out like, okay, what weekend could we do this? And then once Michaela said she was coming last weekend, I'm like, oh, you know, that'll be fun for her to do that with me. A lot of people have heard her on the show over and over again, you know, for the last like 10 years. So, um, and then I asked Warren to come because he's so good at these kinds of, he's, he's the community guy, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, Warren, would you come and help me? And he's just the best kind of person for that kind of thing. Um, And so- we've done these before. Yeah. And when we promoted them and we've given a person a specific date, like when we went and did it in Dallas, we had three or 400 people there, but we promoted it for two months. We had people, remember that one group of uh, ladies that they talked there, like one of them had like access to a private jet and they all took a private jet in from Arkansas. I know. I'm like, how do we, how do we become friends with that? <laughs> <laughs> that was just joking. Good. But when you have that much time, yeah. so if we would have given people a month or five weeks to come in on that, on this past Saturday, people wouldn't have just come from the, almost exclusively the 40 people were within two hour drive. But what was nice about it being 40 people is it really did give me the opportunity to meet a lot of those people. But the whole point of a meetup is for people to meet each other because I'm the one thing everyone has in common so they know everything about me. You know what I mean? Like I, I way share, way overshare. There's like no question to ask me because you're like, yeah, I already, I already know. I've already heard you cry about things that upset you. I know about you and your husband. Like I know way too much, Shalene. But when you bring people together in a community where they don't even realize how much they have in common, you have to facilitate that. And so that's what we did. We, um, which was great. So my friend Warren, he uh, of um, Octo Nation, you know, largest octopus fan club. But he's also like, you know, he's he's very well networked. He helps people figure out their brand. You know, he's really good at community. And he has this friend who wrote the book called The Two Hour Cocktail Party, How to Build Big Relationships with Small Gatherings. Warren, this this is a true story. Like two hours before the event, I'm like, I need to figure out how to get these women and their husbands who or boyfriends, whatever they brought, um, to get to know each other. And I, I, you know, there's going to be people like me who are introverted and like people, but you know, h- how do I facilitate all that? And I started come. I went to chat GPT and started mm-hmm. coming up with like questions. And then I went like mixer style stuff. And he goes, wait a second, my friend wrote that book. Let's just call him. And he literally put him on the phone and he walked, he's like, okay, what's the times? All right. Seven to nine 30. Okay, great. Here's what you're going to do. And he literally walked me through how to keep everything going, but make sure people really get to know each other and build relationships. So if you're planning on doing a meetup, it's, he's got an audible version of it on Amazon, pick it up. And you, I'm telling you, it made it, don't you think it was great? It was great. I also think that, I think there was a couple things great. First of all, um, bring a, like a whistle because Shaleen can oh, whistle really well. Can I do it real quick? Yeah. So she did that. And the first time she did it, everybody was like, what the hell was that? Like yeah. literally just like did a, you know, like the exorcist um, head turnaround. But um, so you, because everybody's going to start talking. And if you're going to do that, you you either have to have the, the ability to command attention or have something that tells people like, okay, yeah, we like need a bullhorn. We need to be quiet because people want to keep talking and stuff. Which was so crazy because, you know, my fear was like, oh, people are going to get there and they, you know, if you came with a friend, you're just going to be standing there talking. Like, I wanted them to get to know how much they have in common with everyone else there. And then the other thing, too, not that we not that we push alcohol, but when you're getting a group of people together that don't know each other, there's a good chance that some of them are going to have already a little social anxiety about being there, a little nerves. And there's nothing better than like a little glass of wine or a little glass of champagne to take the edge off. And then we just got we got seriously lucky that we had an amazing caterer for the thing. Now you don't have to cater it, but you know, it is nice to try to find like a local person to come in and, and which we did and it was like fantastic. So like the setup was amazing. It was unbelievable. And you know, 
what was shocking to me, this was shocking. I don't know why, but I just assumed people who would come to a meetup to, you know, or travel a couple of hours, some people on a busy weekend, it was formula one weekend. It's a Saturday night in Miami. I'm like, these are like people who are really invested. These are definitely going to be people who listen to the Patreon. Yeah. Yes. Because Patreon is like, you know, if you think this is personal, like we really, we go there. I've told like stories I've never told before, um, stuff about my childhood. We've talked about things that we are just too personal to talk about on the regular show, either because it involves somebody else or it's, it's just, you know, more intimate or funny or whatever. And so, uh, you know, I, I asked the group, I'm like, so how many of you listen to the podcast? And every hand went up. I said, how many of you have done one of my workouts? And maybe half. Yeah. Say half. Um, and then I'm like, and this is the part I was shocked. I said, okay, and how many of you are Patreon? Now, out of 40, before they raised their hands, how many legitimately did you think we're going to raise their 30. hands? 30. Yeah. Me too. I wish I was, <laughs> and I think I almost was like, she needs to rephrase that question because like they didn't understand the question, but like one person, one or two people like raised their hand and and then that was shocking. The one gal who was Patreon of Vaulty, um, Sherry, yes. actually two people. So the, Sherry the, the, and the girl, the girl, um, Desi. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, but Desi didn't come late. So Desi wasn't there when you did that. Right. Call. Neither of them were at that point. Oh, she wasn't either. No, so the, no. yeah. And yeah. Sherry was a, a, a insurance agent. Yeah. So anyways, um, when I was talking to other people later, they were saying, they said, you have to tell people like, and this is not a push for Patreon, but I don't think people understand like how much they would really like it. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Anyways, we just don't, we don't push it. And so it's like, I that, mentioned that, it. that's our fault. Like, so we can't, so, we can't expect people to be all Patreon members that no. listen to the podcast and we don't like tell people about it. Yeah. But for five bucks, you can back binge a full year's worth of episodes and they're timeless because they're freaking funny. But anyways, my point is that I will sometimes on um, a lot, almost every show I'll say, yeah. Uh, so anyways, I told this on the Patreon because I, I'm almost like trying to acknowledge those people who are on Patreon, like, and, and like, let them know, like, I know I already said this. I don't want them to think I'm like losing my mind. I'm like, yeah, I know I mentioned this on Patreon. Anyways. Um, now I'm going to say that I explained the story about there's, and it's an interesting story. So if you are, if you want to join Patreon, I tell the story about, um, on the vault level on about the friend that I wanted to meet yes. and I wanted to make her my friend. And so I told that story anyways, what roundabout, because I'm trying, we're trying to make friends as adults. And so I'll just give you a, a quick synopsis of what I did. And that is, I, I met this gal that I briefly five minutes and I thought immediate, like, Oh, I connect with her. I like the way she, I like her style. I like the way she dresses. I like the way she, like, I like her personality. We could be buddies. And, um, I had to figure out like, how, how do I find her again? So long story short is I found her, but then what do you do once you find some, like, how do you make friends? Right. Can we, can we, can we be friends? Yeah. Do you want to be friends? Circle yeah. one. Yes or no. So for me, it's finding out on like stalking them enough to figure out like, what do they do and what do you have in common and how can you create some type of reason to interact that allows you to get to know them a little bit more. That's all it's, you're just trying to figure out like, would we be friends before declaring it? So I found out that she was an event planner. I got a hold of her and I, and so it was a really good excuse to say, Hey, let's have lunch so we can talk about the event. So for you, maybe it's you, there's someone on your kid's, team and you're like, I, I like that mom. I, I just don't know quite how to like approach them about being friends. Just sit next to them, ask a few questions, figure out what they do, figure out how you can continue to have conversations, find a way to exchange numbers. That's not weird and creepy. And it, it takes time and it takes you being creative. It also requires that you kind of put yourself out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's no, there's no um, risk involved because it doesn't say that you have to be, you're not, you're not marrying this person. You're not bringing them into your family. You're just one of somebody that, you know, occasionally, like you said, go on a walk with, you know, go out to dinner with, yeah. go to lunch with what, whatever they might like. Typically here's the way this thing goes. Oh boy. Like Shaleen might meet somebody or like be friends with her, but for us to go on a double date, I got to approve. 
Like, so, you know, or it, it doesn't make any sense. Well, and so when I went out to lunch with this gal, mm -hmm. um, not only was I asking her questions about herself, I was asking her tons of questions about her husband. Cause I'm like, you know, I need to figure out like, are our husbands going to gel? Cause we've been on double dates before where like, I know there's one specific trait that you cannot handle. Like you have zero, zero, zero talents for it. Even if you really like the person. Mm -hmm. Let me tell them. Sure. They, they can't be cheap. It's cheapness is, 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 is a pet peeve. Of and how do you define cheapness? Um, and cheapness isn't the fact that like, you it, do or it, don't have money. You do or don't have money. You don't have to be, it's just like almost a mindset of it's the mindset. It's the way you talk. It's the way, um, if the subject comes up of money or things, it, the first word out of the, their mouth is, oh my gosh, that costs too much. That's too expensive. Um, we could never, we could never do that. Or just, yeah. or just, or like looking at, uh, it's just. Hey, you know what I would say? I would say it's the person who can afford to do something that's convenient for everyone and comfortable, but they refuse to because they're just, you know, pinch pennies. Like they're, you know, making plenty of money, but they're still taking their toilet paper two ply and splitting it in half to have two rolls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, and telling you about it. Yeah. Or it's that, <laughs> that, that person who I, I know who you're thinking about, who, you know, they're millionaires and, um, the things he does because he doesn't want his wife to spend money that we think puts her, it, it's not safe for her, you know, like different things, like having to get rides from, strangers i'm like what that's like hitchhiking like no anyway so it cheapness that's your thing yeah. but anyway so we went out to lunch and part of getting to know someone is knowing how to be a good listener i'm going to break all of that down on friday's episodes like how do you become a better how do you become better in social environments whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in you know big group settings and i think that episode will be very helpful but it starts like in, in order to make friends, you have to be, you have to put it out there. Like I've talked about on the podcast. I'm like, I, I'd like to make some Miami friends. I, I exchanged phone numbers at the, yeah. You did? Yes, with one of the guys, yes. You're gonna have a friend? I, he wants to be my friend. Um, did you ask enough questions to figure out uh, if you had stuff in common? Yeah. Why do I look taller than you almost? Because you're sitting on four cushions right okay. now. Okay, don't give away my secret. There you go. <laughs> um, and, so, you know, when you're asking questions and getting to know someone at a mixer, then did you ask for his number or did he ask for yours? No, I, in fact, he asked for mine. He's like, he said, he, did this, he have a reason? This is what he said. He said, we got to get together. Oh, okay. He said, he said, you're, you, you are, uh, I don't talk to a lot of people that are like as real as you, like the, you just call it the way it is. I'm like, okay. Then he's got my personality. Like he understands mm -hmm. like what I'm talking about. And you know, he's, he, I, they don't, from what I gathered, they didn't have kids, but they're in this entrepreneurial spirit and, and they like to do certain things that like, like his, his interests were the same as mine. Okay. And I told him some of the things that he likes to do, Wait. that I, I don't like to do. Okay. That's right good. That. So we got like some things that like, he goes, first thing he said, he goes, do you like to smoke cigars? And I said, no, I don't like smoking cigars. He goes, perfect. He goes, oh. so we won't go there. Okay. He's just, oh, you, okay. you know, so then he was like, he was like telling me, he's like, what are your, he literally asked me, he goes like, so what, what do you like to do when you go out? And stuff oh, like that. So, well, that was nice. Well, yeah. wow. He should write, he should write a book on how to make male friends over well, when you're an the adult. The book that Warren's friend wrote wasn't just for girls. Was I it? know, no, but it's kind of like more like how to create those conversations in um, a social environment. Um, but it was a great event and the gal who ended up catering it it's a crazy story um and you know i don't want to like bore anyone who already heard it on patreon but um i'll just tell you this god is so cool the way you're just in the most like there's millions of people in this world and the way you randomly meet the people you're supposed to meet is so freaking cool anyways shout out to alexia who catered the event it's called nude pita and here's a picture of Alexia. Her restaurant is in Miami. It's across from um, the uh, design, design district. district. And it's she's from Greece originally, but she, the cool story, she did Turbo Jam and she lost a bunch of weight and she like changed her lifestyle and it inspired her to become a chef and then open up her own restaurant in Greece. And now she's opened up one here in Miami and they serve keto 
Greek food and, and it's like nine, it's like eighty um, percent vegan. Like yeah, the, 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 the menu, menu is, mm -hmm. but they still have like meat dishes and stuff like that. Let me tell you, if you go, if you have to go there, if you live please in the, do, if you live in the Miami area, just and you like Greek food, and you like Greek food, which is it's so good. Go if you're vacationing here and you're you know everybody, you're always trying to find a place to go, perfect place for lunch, and just don't even you don't even have to worry about it. Here's your menu. Get the flatbread sourdough. It's hundred year old sourdough bread. It's insane. She tested it on our our meet and greet. She wasn't, you know, she was testing it for a restaurant, and it, everybody was in love with it. I, I love a good Greek salad. Who doesn't love a good Greek? She salad? She had a good Greek salad there. I've heard had... recently, and I don't have to ask her, but I've heard recently you're not supposed to say um, Chinese chicken salad like that. Um, that should just be called a, a chicken chop salad like. Now we're not supposed to put where it came from. Yeah, mm. I, lot, that probably can't call them French fries anymore. There's lots of rules, people. Lots of rules to keep up with. It's ridiculous. So what I've decided to do is I don't pay attention to the rules. <laughs> he really doesn't. I'll be like, you can't say like certain things where I'm like, no, that's not a new rule, dude. That's like a for everyone knows forever and ever. You're not supposed to say that. And he'll say those things. I'm like, no, we don't. Th th we're not saying that. Um, luckily, my kids listen to me. It was very fun and it, we got to meet new people, but more importantly, people got to meet each other. And that happened because of the way it was facilitated. And that that's not something I know how to do. Like literally having a plan in place made it so easy, I thought. Mm -hmm. And having two friends here was, speaking of adult friends, um, you know, even just navigating adult friendships can be a little confusing. So, um, and I've done this on many occasions where, in fact, I think, my friend group, like I think I brought almost all of them together, like introduced them to each other. I'm almost positive, with the exception of Jen and Janelle. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The only yeah. exception is Jen. And we went to high school with Janelle or Jen. Um, but it's it's interesting when you have a friend and you want to introduce them to another friend, right? Because you're the one that they have in common, but you don't know if they're going to get along. It's almost like siblings, you know, like your you and your brothers and sisters like really the only thing sometimes you have in common is your parents like i know so many people have like zero in common with their siblings like they they're not alike from a personality standpoint from a mindset i mean I political beliefs i have acquaintances with my brother but we don't have the same friends yeah like we have acquaintances yeah i would say like, mike valpredo but like that's it that, that yeah. was the person i was gonna say it's like most yeah. common yeah but it's so I invited so Michaela and I have been best friends for like the last I don't know what 10 15 years um and uh so you know she I know we know each other too well almost and Warren is a newer friend I met him like maybe a year and a half two years ago you met him December you met him after Christmas of 2020. okay anyways haven't known him obviously as long I think it was 2021 but it doesn't matter um but he's one you meet people sometimes where you're like whoop like instant connection and that's the kind of connection we have but it, what's so funny and and i was introduced to warren through april mm -hmm. and so this is a very interesting conversation in my opinion and i haven't had to talk to you about this but like we noticed in the pod squad because warren came here this weekend and i always you know whoever is with me I'm, i post stories about them whether it's my mom or dad or whoever so i was posting stories with warren and with Michaela and people who listen to the podcast and follow me on social were so confused. And they're like, who is this guy that just randomly showed up? And all the theories about who he is is hysterical. Like some people yes. are like, oh, it's it's her brother. Did you hear some of the other theories? No, I just heard that one person was like, who is this person? I've been following Shalene for years. I'm not all of a sudden this person comes at her. Are we supposed to know yeah. who this is? And I thought, and so we were all in the car and uh, Warren was reading that to me and I'm, and I'm like, that's so weird. That's so strange that people think he came out of nowhere or whatever. And um, he was kind of laughing about it too. And Michaela being the, the psychologist. Um, she had the, the best intro. She had the best um, analogy. Answer, the analogy yeah. She's like, it's, it's not weird. These people, they know you. Like if someone has been listening to the show for 10 years, 
they really, really know you and you talk about everything in your life. And so if they've missed maybe the one or two episodes where you've mentioned him, it does feel like it's out of the blue for them. And it's about trying to make sense of your world. Like it's, and also being protective of, you know, the person who you have, I forget what they call it, like a relationship with, because you listen to the podcast. You know what I mean? Like you feel like, like when I met people, the mixer people's husbands would say, oh, my wife refers to you as her friend, Shalene. I cannot believe you guys are just meeting today because like, I'm so sick of hearing your voice. Like <laughs> my, my wife will say, we're not, Shalene said, we're not doing that. So we're not doing that. It was kind of funny. Um, but so it was interesting to have Michaela explain it that way. And then I thought about how um, that is true even of me, right? Like, so when it's social media, like, let's say, for example, I'm just going to use Mindy as an example. You guys know Mindy Lawhorn, another one of my friends. Um, let's just say that I'm watching Mindy's stories. And then suddenly there's a weekend where she's like constantly posting another girl. I'd be like, did we approve her? <laughs> like, who is she? You know what I mean? Like when April started um, posting up uh, with Brooke, like she and Brooke yeah. became f friends really fast, Brooke Castillo. And I, I remember thinking, I, I, I didn't know who it was. And she's very, very well known in the coaching community, Brooke Castillo. You guys probably, she's got a great podcast too. Um, and I'm like, who, who is this? I don't know who this is. And did, did I approve her? You know what I mean? So I get it. Like, yeah. you know, but we are all, uh Oh, it's a brand new sweat sweatshirt. And I don't need you to know that it's a brand new sweatshirt. My tag just popped out. Now Brett's going to know that I haven't had this forever. I, I, this is a ridiculously I, stupidly overpriced sweatshirt, but it's so comfortable. I tried not to buy one, but they're, I know, they're but just like, so comfortable. This is, this is like your sister's uniform. I know. This is her standard, like every day yeah. she lives in. Yeah. But it is so feel the it's, inside. Yeah, of I, I know. As soon as she, yeah, as soon as she gets done working out, she throws this on. So comfy. Anyways, I think it's something we all do, right? Where you're like, wait, when it's someone you know really well, it's it's social media that we're like. You, as adults, you don't just, you're not like, who's that person? And we don't see each other every day. And you don't tell, like, if you have a friend who's in another state, you don't tell them, oh, hey, I met someone today and I might <laughs> yeah. be friends. I don't know. It's just a, it's a kind of a peculiar thing, but I, I completely get it because I've done it too. So I don't know what sense to make of it other than kind of what, um, Michaela had said. But it is interesting when you bring two people together and you know both of them very well, it's, it, it never works when you're in, as a girl, when you're in like middle school or elementary school, like if you have a daughter, you know this to be true. And there's always three little girls that hang out and it's constantly a battle, constantly, because one of them is the boss of the other two. And then one is always on the outs. Like it's, it, it's always that way. So it's kind of a weird dynamic when you're an adult and there's three friends and two of those friends didn't know each other. Like you've brought them together. Right. And so you're what you're as the person who's bringing them together, you're praying. You're like, I love this person. And I love this person like a mom who has two kids. And when you're a mom who has two kids, you want your kids to love each other. And sometimes they don't and you can't force it. You just, as an adult or someone who has adult kids, like, like last week, you're like, did you hear Sierra and Brock went to lunch? And we were like, oh, <laughs> we were like so happy, but you almost don't want them to know how happy it makes yeah. you because you don't want to put pressure. It's, you just wanted to happen organically, but you're hoping that it happened because it's a relationship yeah, by right. choice. I mean, yeah. by chance, like they didn't choose it. Yeah. And the same is true when you have two people, you, you're an adult and you've got two friends that you really, really love. And you're like, yeah, I hope they like each other, you know? <laughs> and so, and, and you know that there's some things that they won't, right? Because yeah. all of your friends serve some purpose for you. You know what I mean? Like it might be, I don't know if I want to say purpose, but you know, like there are certain things I'm going to overlook. N no one's perfect. And so I have plenty of friends who it's like, I, we're overlooking that. So don't bring that up because- I love this person, so we're not talking about that. Like you, you can't. Or you've already gone. You've already gone through that valley with that person, mm -hmm. and then the new person just realizes, like, oh, that's. And then you don't. There's no reason to bring it up because you've already gone through the valley and come out the other side yeah. with that person. Yeah. 
So it's, it's kind of like, there's so much history yeah. that you have with both people that you just want them, the, those people to like each other and like start a new history. We don't need to go all the way back. Yeah. And I've had friends who've introduced me to one of their friends who's like real, they're really, really close with. And I've said to myself, I don't get it. I don't understand. Are you thinking of people? Um, I don't have those people. Like my one friend in Vegas who had a friend that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I don't get it. But, um, and so then you just, you then, then you go, am, am I missing it? Or like, wait. But then you got to go back to what you just said, that, that different friends serve different purposes. So mm -hmm. that friend could have served a different purpose. And mm -hmm. you're looking at that person as like, well, gosh, I, I give this to this. I know what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. I, this person, I don't know what they're bringing to the table, but they yeah. must bring, they must have brought something at some point. Absolutely. I think that's fair. It's just an interesting dynamic. Right. And you know, like I love that it's, um, a boy and a girl like this weekend with Warren and Michaela, because we went and we rented a convertible and we drove around and sang and I let them both pick on me because I have like the worst voice and also with my vocal cord injury. Traffic jam. Which is why my voice is deeper. Um, I have one vocal cord that it won't close. It just won't touch. Like when they do a scan or whatever scope, it like doesn't close all the way. It has a partial paralysis. So literally songs I used to be able to sing like six months, well, not six months, like a year ago before my surgery. I don't know what caused it, but um, I, I can't sing the song anymore. Like my voice, it, literally it's like the most frustrating, bizarre thing in the world. It's like, it just, nothing comes out. It's crazy. Anyways, my point was they both have freaking amazing, amazing voices. So, you know, we drove around in the convertible and sang and um, they and, were amazing at the event together. And you all three have ADHD. Oh yeah. And that makes is, it super fun. Which makes it great for me. Okay. So then <laughs> after our meetup, one of the gals that we met, um, Amanda, she was so funny and so fun. Uh, is we that were the one that picked you up? From anatomy. Yes. yes. And, uh, Okay, so here's the picture. I'll, uh, this is Amanda picking me up at um, the party. And I was just praying that I had underwear on. I did. I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> but look at my face. <laughs> Anyways, she told us to go to this place afterwards. She's like, I said, any, because I could tell I, I like get her vibe. And I'm like, oh, she's fun. Like fitness girl. Like, I, you know, love her energy. I could tell she could dance. And I'm like, any places you recommend? She's like, yes, go to this place called Begatel. And I'm like, okay. And she described what it was like. She's like, it's just, just good music. It's so entertaining. It is such a vibe. It's such good people watching. Like you, it's just a whole thing. So we're like, okay, great. So we, um, we pull up. She said, you can probably get a drink. Like it's going to, it's F1 weekend. Okay. She did tell you that. Like there, were, she, you weren't thinking we were getting no, a No, no, no. She yeah, said, you, maybe you'll be able to go in and get a drink. Like you need a reservation. Yeah. Cause we pulled up to this place and it's got like the red rope and like, two guys sitting out there in their little suits and they're kind of like, they're kind of like looking at us in Miami. If you don't have a reservation, they look at, they, there could be nobody in the restaurant. And if you don't have a reservation, they look at you like you're like the scum of the It's earth. the moment where like that person has all this power and they're yeah. like, <laughs> no yeah. reservation. Sorry. So, and the, the restaurant could be empty. So I was like, so I think it was either Michaela or Shalene was like, no, we don't have a reservation. We just wanted to go in. And the guy's like, oh, okay, sure. No problem. You can go to the, you can go to the bar and we walked in and uh, we were greeted by a hostess there. And she kind of looked at me and she said, you've been here before. And I was like, no, I've never been here before. And she's like, and all these places, because you're drinking and stuff like that. And it's kind of like open. You just kind of like walk in. She wanted to check like my ID and she got my phone number. Just, I don't know what, I don't know why for it. Probably did like solicit business afterwards. I have no idea. Of course. Like they want to like text you, like come back. Of course. So she grabbed my ID and she looked at me and she goes, internet. She goes, <laughs> internet. she goes, like, she, she, yeah, she, she literally said, internet. she goes, I know I follow your whole family. And then she looked at me and I go, I go, there's Shalene. And she goes, hi, ah, she gave Shalene a big hug. So at that point I was like, okay, now she's we like, Oh my God, I love you guys. And she, yeah. she was young, like 
yes. maybe like, 19 or something like oh, yeah. 21 she's probably mid-20s yeah i don't know and she so, looked anyway, young. She's very young she gave us a hug and and she's like and i'm like can we go get a drink at the bar and she's like yeah no problem and then warren because he's yeah. so smooth says yeah. Um, oh, it, he, he taps into the, he's like, oh, you love their family. That's so amazing. What's your name? He starts asking her all yeah. the questions and he goes, well, we would love it if there's any way, if any tables opened up. Yeah. Right. And so we sit down at the bar, the place is friggin' packed. packed. We sit down at the bar, Saturday night. we order champagne yeah. and bef- the champ, we just ordered it. And before it even he, the bartender's there before he even pours the drink, she walks over, she goes, I got you a table. And not just a table. Like, like the second the best table. table in the whole place. Like it literally was, it might've been even be- better than the one that. Oh the, yeah. The, Cause they couldn't see the whole thing. So we could see the whole scene. And, and it was a scene. This, this, the girl from anatomy is her name, Amanda. Yes. So Amanda was dead on it. It actually had really good food too. So we were kind of hungry cause we didn't like eat like a full meal. We just had like appetizers. Like Mediterranean food. I think at the, at the meat greet. So we just had like so, a, a few, we got a salad and, and I, I think I got sea bath. Food was great. Let me describe the environment. Okay. You can describe. Okay. So it's like, it's like a Parisian boudoir meets Las Vegas. It's like, um, quintessential South beach, like, uh, just everyone's there to see and be seen. Like they are wearing, like I always say, at least in South beach, when you go to one of these like re- restaurants, it's like a restaurant, but it's also a club. Mm-hmm. So it, at a certain hour, you, you hear the music is just About pumping typical. and you just, it starts to really pick up and you're like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And there's really no dance floor, but you can tell from the wait staff that things are going to happen. And so the, the center of the restaurant is a DJ booth, like up pretty high and flanking the DJ booth are um, entertainers. So it's either like a saxophone player comes out and kind of does improv improv, um, on the sax while to the popular beat of the music, whatever, or these two women hop up who are just like absolutely the most beautiful bodies you've ever seen in your life. And they're just dressed very kind of, kind of cabaret, like not inappropriate, you know, they're covered, but it's very cabaret style, it's like, like a avant carte, like avant body suit with just some like sparkles and stuff like that. Yeah, it wasn't nude. They were wearing nylons. That's what you're thinking was nude. Okay. And a bodysuit. But that's, like a, that's, yeah. That's pretty flipping good that a boy can figure That's that pretty out. good, yeah. And and they're just like they're like voguing, like it is, you know, putting Madonna to shame. Like it it's so it's so good to watch. It's so entertaining. And the music is pumping and and, and our your wait staff is like, I mean, they hired the most outgoing, fun, vivacious, like legit. Like you can tell, like our uh waitress, what was her name? Viviana. Viviana. Viviana was amazing and she i just watched her the whole night she was so sweet to everyone else that worked there and they these people work their butt off so everything they bring out to your table is very much a show like we ordered burrata and they come out with this big giant thing of cheese or i think warren ordered burrata like this big giant ball of burrata and and they 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 chop it all up for you at the table like she does that we ordered a, a whole chicken yeah and they come out and they debone it and you know so everything's a a performance and a show and the music keeps kicking up and you and people start getting crazier and crazier and then they start encouraging people to get like up on tables and dance tables and chairs yeah. tables and chairs they, they want that right because that's the vibe and you can tell that there's some i don't know bachelor parties or birthday parties that was a or, birthday party in front of us about, about yeah. 12 guys they were having a good time but one of the coolest things that's just so fun and so entertaining is if anyone orders a nice bottle of champagne about 500 dollars or more Oh, is that it? It's about five hundred. If you order a two hundred fifty dollar bottle, you get in the show. Um, not at that place. Okay. I don't think. Wow. Right. But so, I mean, but it's literally the markup that they do on these bottles is insanity. Okay, I'm gonna let you okay. talk about that in a second. But so the first, you know, when someone orders a bottle, you're like, "What's going on?" Because all of a sudden, the DJ like stops playing the music and the lights go off. So you're like looking around, like, "What's going on? What's going on?" Like, so all the attention, right? And then all, and they they make it silent for like five seconds, which is a long time in a restaurant and the lights go down, everyone's looking around. And then all of a sudden, like all these people came out dressed up as um, 
Pablo Escobar and his, and his entourage. Right. And they're playing this like crazy Pablo Escobar song. I don't know. I've never heard it before, but it's like a, you know, house club music and, um, and they're dressed in character and they go over to the table and all the staff, like they climb up on the backs of the booth and they're going and everyone's in costume. It's probably like 15 staffers and they have this, you know, bottle of champagne and the way that they present it and then it's just like you know sparklers and Columbia, confetti Columbia and, and flags and stuff yeah, it was it's just so great. fun it's great. and it's just it's so and it's freaking entertaining and you're like this is so fun and then you know so i was up and dancing and like i say in miami it, there's only at the nightclubs it's either hoochie or gucci like that's it like that's it's just like what were you super, that night gucci? well i wasn't wearing any gucci so you were hoochie? I guess so. Okay. I probably was. I mean, I was. Yeah, you were hoochie. I, I wasn't trying to be, but like, you know, I didn't know that we were going to go dancing or I would have not worn that dress. It's like one of those wrap dresses, you know, the dress that you saw Amanda picking me up in. It's just not very conducive to dancing because it's got like a slit in it. And I had underwear on, but they're nude underwear. You know what I'm saying? So I was, I was like very conscientious about like being careful, like where I was dancing. But the table next to us, this is, we, this is a little bit embarrassing, but I'm just going to tell you. So the table next to us was a couple. A couple probably in their late 40s, early 50s. Oh, not that old. Late 40s, maybe. Okay. 40s, That's mid 40s. Okay. Mid 40s. Okay, so I'm sure. Which, by the way, do we have to have ages anymore? Can we just say? There, there are a couple that have been, been married for quite some time. Here's my point. Okay. Like, I keep telling people, and I don't know, I can never remember my age. So can I just say, like, if you hit 40 and you're 43, you can just say 40. If you hit 50 and you're 55, just say 50. Like, once you hit over 40, like, just just be the number. You're that number for the decade. For the decade. Yeah, I'm, I'm 40. Like this video, if you're watching on YouTube, if you agree, like, this should just be a thing. It's so childish to say 47. You're 40. It's such a waste of time to say you're 52. Like who can, no, you're 50. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Go it's been, for it. it's been decided. So from now, anyway, so they were, they were 40 and yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. They're 40. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I assume that they're Muslim, by the way, she was wearing a hijab. Wait, not hijab, hijab. Yeah. I looked it up. Okay. It's hijab. H I J A B hijab. Okay. Or if I said so it correctly. They're in a booth that is bigger than the booth that we were in with four people. So they were in like a, like a booth that usually probably be six to eight people Mm -hmm. and they're just there together. And Mm -hmm. you you know, they're very, they're very like snuggly, but they're They're not, there's no PDA going. They're just close together. Right. And they're eating and they, they, they had a presentation. They were doing this appetizer. That was like a a pizza with, with avocado uh, and caviar. And they got that. That, that Did you look at how much that was on the menu? No, because it was they. She didn't give me the price because it was in, it was off menu. It was like oh. one of their specials that night. So our waitress um, Viviana was preparing it, the whole thing, and she's eating. It, so they're eating it. Then I've never had caviar. After Pablo Escobar comes out, it's probably 15, 20 minutes later. All of a sudden, lights go out again. Lights come back on. Jim Carrey, the mat, not Jim Carrey themselves, but a, a, a impersonator of the mask, the green, the yellow suit, like costume. a full blown Hollywood production costume. Like it's so good. He comes up over the top of our booth into their booth. Cause you know, there's space and he's on top of their booth. And then all of a sudden behind one of the girls, it might've even been Anka, the girl that we met at the front. She's bringing this giant bottle. I think that they call them mag magum magnums. When they're that big, mega, I don't know. I don't know. It's the biggest bottle of champagne I've ever seen. Crystal. But I didn't know it was crystal oh. until like I looked and I was like, oh my God, that's crystal. So I'm like, I, I don't, I've never even had it before. I've never even seen it, but it was like, it was, it was like seven bottles of crystal. How much is a, a bottle of crystal normally? Normally just a regular, like a regular bottle, yeah. 200 bucks in the store. Oh, really? In the, in the liquor store. Oh, okay. So I'm thinking, like, I looked, I Googled it that night. I was like, because I couldn't Google that that exact bottle, but Crystal, and I'm like, okay, maybe there's five bottles of that. So let's just say a thousand dollars. So Warren looks on the menu to see how much that bottle was. The mega bottle. The mega bottle, five thousand dollars. So that's it's that was like basically a four thousand dollar show of a delivery of this Del- bottle. Yeah. So when they come to the table, like it, it's just, a, it's so fun. And There's just sparklers. A, and- yeah. And you know, the, the, the couple, they were so cute. You could just tell they were very in love and um, having a good time together. He was laughing and oh, like yeah. loving the whole thing. 
but um uh, you know, I, I was like, I was a little self-conscious because our booth was right next to theirs and I kept getting, you know, getting up to dance outside the booth. Uh -huh. And I was like, I, I hope this is appropriate, but like, this is this place, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, cause there is obviously a, a, a level of modesty mm -hmm. that obviously she is honoring. And anyways, yeah. anyways, I'm like, I can't think about it. Like this isn't, this is, they this is not my time. relationship. They were laughing and having a good time. They, are, the they time. were. And here's the deal. So the, the two of them, and they each had a glass. Like homeboy must be loaded. Loaded. That, now, now, when that bottle came, I was already, my brain's already thinking like, why would they get that? There's only two of them. And like, so then more glasses came out and they gave the glasses to the employees. Staff. The, so this, they gave the whole staff, like we're having glasses of champagne, right? Yeah. And Cristal, so then, which is like, then they, um, they, they left and they, and they said goodbye to us, which is so sweet to people. In the, and we almost made new friends, like, cause they, they said goodbye and, and we were like, oh, you're so lovely. And, you know, and we were anyways, so, so then they left and I look at this bottle of Cristal, which we took, wait, first we're such, what do you call it? Posers, such posers. He took a picture of the bottle of Cristal, this giant bottle of Cristal and sent it to our kids. And what was the comment you sent? Like something like baller life, You're like <laughs> yeah. pretending like he bought it, right? But I didn't even worse than that because after they left, I'm like, they're not gonna drink the rose on crystal. I've never tried crystal. I'm gonna like dumpster dive right now. I don't care. I ain't, I ain't above it. They're leaving. Like it's not like anyone's mouth is around the bottle. And it's sitting right here next to our booth, and I saw him like give, giving out you know drinks to the staff. I'm like, certainly I've got to try crystal. So I mean, it's a big bottle. Like, and so I sure did. I sure did help dumpster dived How was dumpster it? diving for Cristal. It was so like, I don't know if it's placebo effect and you just know it's expensive, but I was like, this is so smooth, but I did have a hangover the next day and I never yeah, get that, a hangover. But that was because of the amount, not because. Cause the amount notes, because I had, um, I think it's because I had a, a margarita. You, you should never do that. You were doing just fine with champagne. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know what you did? What? You, you got FOMO because Warren and Michaela both got these fun little margarita drinks with the tahini around the rim, and that made you get FOMO. I should know better because literally, I um, two glasses of champagne is perfect. If I do three, if I do th which on occasion you have manipulated me into having three glasses, okay. then I just um, I'm often taken advantage of. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah. <laughs> And two's reg two's the regular show. Three is who knows what's going to oh happen. Oh boy! But I uh, now we're like Kelly Ripa and her husband. Everyone's like annoyed by how much they talk about how much fun they have together. Oh. But it is what it is. Anyways, I did do two glasses of champagne plus a margarita plus a half a glass of Cristal, and I don't know. I'm, I might, had to do the Cristal. I had to. I emptied that friggin' bottle. <laughs> no shame in my game whatsoever. It was an incredible night. And the next day then we went to Nikki Beach. Um, and, you know, cause like you've got friends in town and yeah. they're coming to Miami. So, and, you know, Michaela's a single mom and it's like, you know, I really want to just let her enjoy herself and experience Miami. And I, I she just loves all of that stuff. So we, we didn't and know. She's only, and she's only 40. Yeah, she's you no, she's fifty. Oh, she is now. Yep. Okay, yep. so she's yeah. 50. Remember, I got tattoos. So I'm fifty. Or 50 oh, was that? Oh, was that the fifty? Yeah, okay. but she's fifty, okay. uh, forever. And so, so we'd heard about Nikki Beach in Monaco. Yeah. I don't know if that's where the first one was, but so we made reservations for Nikki Beach on Sunday. But because we were so hungover, woke Thank up God very late. Oh my God, woke up at like twelve o'clock. Like we gotta go. Because we went to bed at like two thirty or three. Yeah. Who are we? Yeah. I'll tell you who we are. We are wild, empty nesters. Y'all, those of you who are in the thick of it, your kids are little, you're, tr you're trying to get them through high school graduation, figure out where they're going to go to college. Maybe you've got one that's in middle school or in elementary school and, and you're just trying to make your business work. And oh man, they don't even know. Life gets better. It, something gets better. It gets different and yeah. it gets easier. Yeah. I definitely won't say better because I would never, ever compare. I wouldn't change that. No, it's just, I mean, ha having little ones is so yummy it's just but it's freaking hard yeah, it's, it is so hard so i hope that you it's a definitely it's a harder season than it is this season 
Oh, this season is just so friggin' fun. So look forward to it. Don't forget to connect to your partner while you're in whatever season that you're in, because eventually it's just going to be the two of you. And, you know, if you're, even if you're single and you're trying to make it as a, a single mom, like there's going to be a day when you will suddenly go, I can, I don't have to be home. I don't even have to be in this state. I can stay out as late as I want. Like it's so fun. It's all about your perspective. And I'm just going to continue to repeat that phrase. And if this is the first time you've stumbled upon our podcast, I'd love to invite you to subscribe. We talk about life. We talk about health. We talk about all real things. Um, I try to have an incredible takeaway for you in most shows. Like Friday's episode is going to be about overcoming social anxiety, like how to have the confidence to own the room and make other people feel very comfortable. But I mean, we talk about plastic surgery. We talk about Alzheimer's, anything related to like family, how to make life a little easier. Money. Yeah. Everything. So we invite you to subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to turn on the little bell notification. That will let you know uh, when there's a new episode. It'll just show up for you. And it, I love when you're responding in real time in the comments. That's my favorite. So if you're listening on Patreon or wherever you listen, doesn't matter to us, but we really do love getting your feedback and especially um, what things you relate to or what things you find uh, funny. I think that's always a good thing. But I do feel like we're, we're going to need a little break. So Nikki Beach was way more chill than I thought it was going to be. 100%. Like I pictured it being like Begatel. Like I thought people would be like, Whoa! That would have been you know? later in the day. I think. I wonder. Saturday afternoon. Or, we, picked, we got a Sunday, so it was going to be okay. So what it was is. Recovery. Uh, yeah. But it, it, if I'm going to describe the vibe, at least on a Sunday, I don't know if it's normally like this, but it was just very chill. The music was very like loungy, European club style, mm -hmm. you know, vibe, like Ibiza. It felt yeah. like Ibiza. I've and never been to Ibiza. I know, but I've seen movies. Okay. Well, and... It wasn't loud thumping like Ibiza, like the movie we saw. Okay. It was just really relaxing. Just and like beautiful, a... like white day beds. And, you know, people, some a lot of people were wearing like their bathing suits with like beach cover-ups. There were people having brunch. It was just more like of a vibe than like a party. I thought it was going to be, a, um, I wasn't ready for another party, but I thought it was going to be that. And I was happy that it was very, very relaxing. Food was okay. Food was Service average. was okay. Yeah. So would I recommend it? No. Yeah. Probably I mean, if, if you have a, if you have the ability and you're coming here for like a birthday party or a bachelorette party or something like that. And you can get a Friday or Saturday afternoon. It's probably be pretty fun, but just like, just to come hang out. It's, it's, it's average. I feel like we need to take a little break from having guests because and it's not their fault, but I've, I've probably gained five pounds in the last week because you, you know, you go out for every meal and you're having cocktails where you normally wouldn't be having cocktails and you're sleeping in later, like definitely off my routine. We're going to get back to the routine. Okay, good. I appreciate that. Well, listen, we really do appreciate you guys being here with us. Hope you enjoyed this. L let us know if there's anything else you'd like for us to share. We're happy to do so. Um, as always, we really do appreciate you spent any time with us. We don't care where you listen. You know, this is a podcast that we also have on YouTube, but you don't have to watch it. I mean, unless we're referring to something, sometimes we put in like B-roll and videos, like you can see some of the people that we're talking about. We'll probably find some footage to put in here of like Nikki Beach, and maybe we can find some footage of Bagatelle. But again, I, I, if wherever it's convenient for you, like some people don't like YouTube and they would rather listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever it's convenient for you, that's where we want you to be, wherever you wanna leave your comments, whether it's Patreon or the YouTube or Pod Squad, we read them all. And it really does mean a lot to us. So love you, mean it, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. By the way, before you go, if you're looking for more content like this, I would love to recommend this video where Brett and I are sharing this crazy Airbnb that we are staying in here in Miami and some of our additional experiences as empty nesters and just life advice. So if you've got a little extra time, check out this video.